My name is Kay Moon, and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer, and this is a video about the full moon in Leo for the Twin Flame Collective and Divine Counterpart Collective occurring on February 5th of 2023 at 1.27 p.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This particular video, um, let's see here. What do I have for announcements? The only thing I have for announcements is that if you want to see what happens after this particular lunation, we go into the new moon in Pisces in a couple of weeks. Have a listen to the end of the Lightworker Energy Update video that's posted on this channel at the same time this video comes out. Because at the end of that video, I do something called first look, which will allow you to see into the future and how the energy of this moment builds into the next moment. Um, and readings are now available for March, uh, the beginning of March, if you'd like to jump on the calendar, have a look at your year ahead and love and money, you can certainly do that how this union window energy plays out for you personally. My booking is over at kmoonastro.com. It's a great time to really understand more deeply what this union window energy of the divine counterparts meeting up means for you. There they are. They only come together once every seven and seven ish years, give or take. Um, especially if you're feeling open and ready for a new cycle in love, because this energy of the two of them coming together will connote the vibration, the frequency of how the next seven years really goes the vibe and the theme of it <clears throat> and you'll want to make the most of this energy so the divine counterparts are still traveling as one energy like i said there they are there is jupiter the husband there's juno the wife of the zodiac and they are rocking together as one and so in this lunar update, rather than specific and separate divine masculine and divine feminine energetic updates, as you have seen me do, if you've been with me for some time, I'm going to provide uh, a connection update or a union energy update, which will delineate the energy in connection for all as one energy. Okay, for full understanding of how all of this plays out, because this is impacting the collective, not just divine counterparts, because it's such a prominent energy at this particular full moon. It was also very prominent at the last new moon. You can see they're both speaking from fire sign Aries to fire sign Leo, where the new moon sits. If you want to really understand the totality of the frequency of the energy, please have a listen to the Lightworker Energy Updates because they really op operate as more of a part one to the Twin Flame Video Updates, which are more so of a part two. Without this, you really only get part of the picture in this lunar update, and that part may not be particularly useful to you without the rest of the context, okay? So they are trying the full moon and influencing all of the energy of the full moon. And they're bringing the energy of last cycles closing into focus. The last time they came together, I'll just show you that. For those of you who are students of astrology, we'll have a look, was around 5-15-2015. And there they are at that 14th degree of Leo sitting together in May of 2015, 5, 15, 15. There they are at the 14th, nearly 15th degree of Leo. And now here's the full moon. Full moons represent closings. So we are literally closing the cycle of where they once were and the vibration and frequency of the last time they met up, we're literally closing that out right now with this full moon in Leo. 
And now here they are in Aries, opening up a new cycle. Okay. Um, what that cycle represented was covered in the last Twin Flame video. I'll link that at the end of this video. So just click on the next video that will be at the end of this video, or you can pop to it in my Twin Flame 2023 Lunar Update playlist, astrology playlist. But for a quick recap, the last cycle with the counterparts meeting up in the sign of Leo was all about sovereignty. The shadow side was ego. This, uh, this cycle is all about moving into authenticity and our true self and really focusing in on achieving our goals and dreams, passion, drive, and ambition. Coming home to our own authenticity will help clean up any over, <clears throat> over leaning into ego and bring it into balance in this cycle. Now we have the ruler of their courtship. That's Mars here. Mars being about motivation. It's the ruling sign of air, ruling planet of the sign of Aries. So Mars is influencing the two of them from the sign of Gemini, which is all about curiosity. It's about openness, exploration, conversation, and it's providing opportunities for clear thought when Mars is in Gemini and motivation for communication and communication about who we are and where we're at. The vulnerability and authenticity feature here is really heightened by the fact that Chiron is having a conversation with both counterparts. Chiron is sitting so close to the energy of the union. And Chiron is an energy that gives us an opportunity for woundedness or wisdom, depending upon how we use it. And I talk at length about that in the Lightworker Energy Update. So I'll leave you to listen to that if you want to go deeper on that. So this cycle will include an empowerment through owning our own wounds, being honest with ourselves about where we are and where we need to develop and grow. Here, these two are sextiling the sun and Aquarius. Aquarius is the new and the next. The sun is about identity again. And it's bringing out our uniqueness and our identity, especially here conjunct Chericlo. The more ourselves we are, the more divine blessings we tend to receive. She's the energy of divine intercession. As we connect with other like minded individuals, find our tribe. Chericlo is really blessing the process of allowing our own individualism, our own authenticity, our own uniqueness to bring us into the limelight, to bring us to where we're supposed to be. Okay. So that's a real cleanup of any imbalance from shadow side Leo and this is not to say, oh, Leo's like this. It's to say when Leo's operating in shadow, it can be like this. It can be very ego-driven, all about the appearances. It can be very much about power and control, right? And so now with this homecoming energy of getting into authenticity and right alignment with ourself and really standing in our uniqueness, you can see how that's cleaning up anything that the last cycle lent itself to in the direction of going too far in the Leonine direction. <clears throat> we have the divine counterparts squaring Pallas. Sorry, that's Mercury. Where is my friend Pallas here? Here's Pallas there in Cancer. Pallas in Cancer gives us a sense of protectiveness about our emotional reality. And in the square position, makes it difficult to hide how we really feel. There's a desire to stand up for our feelings, to really own them in this energy. And we have the two of them opposite series, um, who is conjunct Makemake, the shaman's asteroid there. They are sitting together. Series is trying Pluto. Pluto talks about the resurrection cycle death, afterlife, rebirth. Ceres talks about the seasonality of things. 
moving from spring to summer, summer to fall, fall to winter. And then Make Make here in the mix talks about the movement through a journey to bring back wisdom for our tribe. There is a real completion of a particular set of lessons in our leadership at this time. We are now graduating from one set of lessons and we will now move into the next. Okay. It's the close, it all echoes that we're closing out a chapter, closing out a season and a cycle. We have the divine counterparts in square to Folis here. Folis represents the energy of sacrifice. And, and in the sign of Capricorn, it's about sacrificing the old structure. Much of the old structures are really falling away on their own. It would, even if we tried to hold on to some of these things, it would be impossible at this time. And for many, this can be a period of grief and sadness and in all of this change. There's a bit of there's a bitter sweetness to the way we relinquish the old. If you've ever graduated from a program or a class or from school or university, you know what that last day, that graduation ceremony can be like, you know, all the work is done. There's nothing else to do. You've done what you could. The grades have been issued. You can't stay in the school anymore. It's time to move on. And so there, that vibe is here with this, just as the new is newing and be allowing new things into our life. So too, is there a return of the books to the school, you know, cleaning out your desk and then moving into your next chapter. We have the counterparts in the union here trining Lilith and there's a desire with a trine to Lilith to do things our way. There's real motivation around that. So it only enhances the energy of Aries being so unique and individualized and about itself <clears throat> in terms of its self-expression being really focused on wanting to be its true self okay um and there's a bit of non-apology about this like listen i am who i am at this point and there's this is really lending itself to the jump off point for union in the third dimension with a counterpart of any label, pick, pick your desired label here. Um, but the jump off point for union with anyone of any label is the ability to love ourselves is the predication point about whether or not we can be loved by another. You wanna be loved by somebody else? The jump off point in this cycle is can you love yourself? Can you adore yourself? You want to be chosen by somebody else? Can you choose yourself? And all of your authenticity, all of what you think your flaws may be, because they're actually leadership ability with that Chiron in the mix. That's the question. That's the jump off point here. Okay. Like I said, um, there's an opportunity if you want to have a look at how this union energy plays out in your chart to read with me because this vibe is going to be with us all year long. This year is a heightened energy. Last year was a heightened energy too because when these two come together, the vibe and the frequency can be felt one year prior up to one year after. The energy kind of dissipates very slowly over the course of this year, but the vibration and the frequency of this is what connotes the cycle divine counterparts will be working for the next seven or so ish years until the divine counterparts meet up again, um, which is roughly about seven years out from here and open up a new cycle. I talk about cycles quite a bit and divine counterpartship and love and relationship cycles and the light worker energy update, since they feature so prominently at this full moon. So again, 
my encouragement is to have a listen to that. You can certainly talk to me if you want to know how this energy plays out for you personally in your chart, but I totally understand if you'd rather figure this out yourself first. So here's some quick instructions. There's a link to a union window video below this video in the description box. In that video, I did a two hour special where I mapped out how to find your chart how to look in your chart to find the sign of Aries, and then how to look at, okay, which house does Aries cover? And then I break down house by house, how you can access the union energy. And that's all for free. It's here on YouTube. It just takes a little bit of time and willingness to sit down and listen and work through the content. <clears throat> So it's right there for you. You don't have to book a reading if you prefer to work solo on this. Um, you can certainly do that. The information is right there. But if you like it when I do it for you, then by all means, let's schedule some time. Once you find your Aries governed house, what you need to do from there is have a look and some consideration. How in this house can I be more authentic? How in this house can I be more me? What in this house are my ambitions? What am I driven and striving to in this house? The energy of driving and striving is Aries energy. And the energy of ambition is Aries energy and the light. Where is it that I could be more myself with the people represented by this house? And again, in that video, I go house by house and break it down for you. I know somebody had asked in the comments on the last video, what if you don't have Aries on a house? You, everyone has Aries on a house. It may not be on a specific house. It may be smooshed together in one house, but Aries is there in every chart. And I walk you through how to find that in that video. Okay. Every, all of us have all 12 energies within us. None of us is without it. You may not have a planetary placement there, but that's not what you're looking for. You're not looking at the planets. You're looking at the sign, which is Aries and what house it governs. Okay. So have a listen to that. Um, and if you're one of the star schoolers, of course, you've got some advanced information about this inside of star school we certainly have been talking about this in the star school q a sessions so i'm going to insert a brief excerpt here about so that you can really bridge the gap when i say you have to come into union with self in the house in order to facilitate union with another i'm going to go ahead and insert a brief excerpt here so that you're able to hear what they heard to understand what that means okay so let me bring mr Mr. and Mrs. Afleklo back and share screen. So for anyone who's curious, what uh, what's being referenced here is that the divine counterparts are both meeting up in the sign of Aries for folks this year. They've already met. And so Aries in Ben Affleck's chart rests here at the latter part of house 10 and the very early part of house 11. Let me adjust some of my tools here so I can work with them easier. In JLo's chart, Aries covers house nine. Okay. So here we have, um, let me just pull up the transits for now because they're technically meeting up in the now time. So you guys can see the way that looks. Now his chart's in the middle. Now her chart's in the middle. Here's Juno and Jupiter in the sky as they stand right this minute. Him at the fifth degree of Aries, her at the seventh. And in his chart, fifth degree of Aries, her at the seventh. And there they are, right this minute. 
And so for her, this union energy is taking place in house nine. Who remembers what house nine represents? If you guys could type it in the chat. Um, and for him, house 10. What do, what, do, what do the ninth and the 10th houses represent? Go ahead and type it in the chat if you remember. Yep, T says exploration and expansion is house nine. Absolutely. Clergy, second spouse, Jane says. Yep, so educators, higher, higher level educators. Yes, that's clergy included. Philosophers, pundits. Rand says it could be second partner. Yes, T says long distance travel. Yes, all of those things. That's house nine. Let's talk about house 10 now. Well, actually, before we talk about uh, 10, let's stick with nine. So for Jennifer, this is house nine. Here she's got divine counterparts here. So what is she coming into union with in her ninth house? What kind of things is she unifying oh. for herself? Ninth it's house second. also governs our belief systems. It governs it's potential, second. all of our potential, our raw material. These are the kind of things that she's coming into union with, all of the things we just mentioned. Now let's deal with house 10 in Ben Affleck's chart. His union is unfolding in house 10. What do we know about house 10? Identity. Could be increased belief in self. Absolutely. For our ninth house, inner union energy. 10th house, what do we know? Public image, yeah. Um, absolutely, France. We also know that there is career for the 10th house. Yes, T, absolutely. Um, social standing in the world, absolutely. Absolutely. It's an identity house. It's fame, Diana says. It's a, it's a house of the identity that the world gives to us, that we are ascribed by the works that we do in the world. The fourth house, the opposing house, is the identity our family gives to us. The 10th house is the identity we have in the world. So here the divine counterparts are coming together in the 10th house. And he's got the sign of the self here. And she has the sign of the self here. So he's coming into union with all the 10th house matters that we just mentioned. She's coming into union with all of the ninth house matters that we just mentioned. And so can union with another person happen with this energy? Absolutely. <clears throat> it would be via the access point is by her harnessing and leveraging her true potential, being clear about what it is she believes in and what she doesn't really coming into, um, you know, kind of her own belief in herself. Aries is the sign of this elf. Ninth house governs beliefs. And for him, the access point to a union with another person is through coming into really, you know, some selfhood and identity around his career and everything he's built thus far. And who he is as a person owning, you know, he may, he may have, he may be one of these celebrities that struggles with fame and low self-esteem. This would be a moment in which he would need to own it, own who I am, what I've created in the world, who people have said I am up until this point. I need to own that. And it's through ownership of that that he then comes into union with another person. Now, it'll be interesting to see if this lasts, given who they both are and how they both roll. Because for him, this is going to create a real, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? A coming together, conjoining, that's not the word. It's going to create a solidification of some 
aspects of his career. His career was already becoming more solidified. He had been working on his sobriety for a long time because um, in recognizing he wanted to be a better parent in certain ways. And he had be started to kind of own more pieces of his own identity. And over here with the Aries piece, she's starting to own more of her own beliefs and who she is and what she wants to create in the world by both of them doing those individual aspects. It lays the groundwork for the potential for a union with another person to manifest. If Aries had been in the 11th house, it would have been about really being more focused on hopes, wishes, and dreams, coworkers and friends that help you get there. It would have been about laying the foundation in the 12th house. If Aries was the 12th house, dealing with your subconscious mind and rooting out any beliefs that separate you from yourself, union with another person could be manifested through focusing on the 12th house matters. If it was the first house, this is the first house of your personality union in that house if that was where this is happening aries union coming together juno and jupiter would have been specifically about owning the disembodied parts of yourself bringing those parts home allowing your personality to be the fullness of what it is no apologies through doing that and focusing there then a union with another person could be accessed the potential for it could be on the table the only time we're focused on a relationship during this period of time is going to cultivate and foster relationship itself is if a person has the Aries seventh house of committed partnership and potentially house five and house six, maybe even house eight. These are our relationship houses, houses five, house six, house seven, and house eight. So if a person has Aries covering one of these houses, only then is focusing on relationships going to bring a relationship home, bring it in. Otherwise, the focal point has to be on the matters that, where they're meeting up in the other houses to set up the opportunity. Okay. Again, this is why I'm not offering relationship readings for me now. <laughs> You guys get it, right? You get it that there is, um, there's this like, okay, if I want that, I have to focus on this because Aries is about me and I have to be about me in this one place in the chart. And if I'm doing that, that'll open the door to everything else. But if I'm just focused on relationship, but the Aries union energy is taking place over here in the house of my subconscious mind, but I'm just focused on, well, what are they doing? And when are they coming back? And are they getting a divorce? And what, you know, when are they going to talk to me again? And when should I reach out during the union? If I'm just them, 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 them focused, and I'm not dealing with where this energy is taking place within me then the door remains shut because I'm focused incorrectly. Unless, of course, you've got that airy seventh house, which not everybody does. I think the only person here who had that, Carrie, was you. <laughs> when I, Because I, I remember seeing that chart and being like, okay, this is yeah. unusual yeah. Um, yeah. to have so much relationship energy in one person's chart be so super deeply focused on relationship in that circumstance then yes it makes sense to be having a look at okay what am i bringing to the partnership what do i need to ask for what do my communication points need to be where have i been blocked when it comes to relationship and romance what do I need to heal within myself so that I'm not blocked? What do I need to forgive? You know, Aries governs ambition. It governs um, our drive, our motivation in that way, our passion. So it would be about what am I passionate about in relationship, cultivating what you want to have in relationship through 
having that with yourself. I love when I'm spoiled and people take me on dates. So spoil yourself and take yourself on dates. Again, union with self then leads to union with another, but the only place in the chart in which it's relevant to dealing with another person directly and head on is if you've got the Aries seventh house. If you don't have that, then the access point is through one of the other doors. Okay. If you've got that airy seventh house and what you want in commitment is someone who calls you every day and focuses on you every day and asks you how your day was every day, you've got to be doing that with yourself first. You got to, be, okay, I'm setting up an hour. This is my union time. I'm going to journal. I'm going to talk to myself. What did I like about today? I'm going to pour myself, you know, a hot cup of tea the way I'd want my partner to do for me. And say, hey, baby, how was your day? I want my partner to cuddle me and hold me. Well, now I have to buy silk pajamas and really cuddly pillows to lay myself down in that bed, get my heating pad, my hot water bottle out, warm myself up, you know, cuddle me. Oh, it's okay, baby. I love you. I know that was hard. So anything you're wanting a partner to do, even if you've got the seventh house Aries, Anything you're wanting another person to do, you still have to do it with yourself. Hello, Aries, sign of the self. As a way of cultivating the energy of it for another person to step into. Okay. And simultaneously, if there's another person circling at this time, there has to all, you have to be willing to be in communication with them, right? You have to be talking to them. There have to be invitations moving in the flow there. If you've got that Aries seventh house, you can't be all, well, I'm waiting for them to contact me. No, Aries is ambitious. You want to talk to them? Go talk to them. Aries is a go-getter. You want to connect? Connect. But the only, again, the only place where that is actually going to lead to greater union is if you've got the Aries seventh house. The rest of us, all need to be focused on whatever house Aries rests on because our access point to having another person show up is through coming into union with ourselves in the matters of that particular house. How did I do with that explanation? Okay, so hopefully that excerpt from Star School uh, Office Hours gave you a teensy bit more information. And helped you really understand, okay, if I'm going to go about figuring this out myself, here's where I need to look, here's what I need to focus on. Once you know the house, you can just, you can listen to either my explanation about the house or you can Google it. Um, it's just, I put it out there for free. If you want me to do it for you, of course, book some time with me. But otherwise, take some time to find this in your chart. Take some time to figure this out for yourself because this energy is going to be extraordinarily dominant this year. And then from this year for the net, for the remainder of the cycle, this is going to be a focal point type of energy for you. And so it's important to know what it is. If you resonate, identify as a divine counterpart so that you can be working this energy in the light instead of in the shadow so that you can be knocking on the front door instead of on the back door or the window in order to create <clears throat> what you want to create in the world of love. Okay. So that's what I got for this lunar update. Hopefully JLo and Ben's charts <laughs> gave you an example of how this energy can differ there. We had a look at those um, and gave you some insight into your own chart as well. That's the lunar update. Thank you so much for all of your likes, your subscribes, and your shares. You'll get further information about this lunation on the whole by watching the Lightworker Energy Update. And I look forward to seeing you over there. Take great care and bye for now.